Dominique. Dominique, yes. So here we are in the mock-up of the European section of the International Space Station. Is that right? Yes, we're here in the Columbus module. It's tiny. Is this based on the real dimensions? Yes, these are the real dimensions. Keep in mind, in reality, it's similar to a teenager's room. It's very messy. When an astronaut goes into space, he'll still spend six months of his life in this space the size of a tin can? Exactly. With colleagues who might not speak the same language as him and things like that, making the life of an astronaut quite difficult. And for space shuttles that were in service up to 2011, it was even worse. Very narrow, they held five or six astronauts. Jean-François Clévoy, who flew three times on board, tells us about this overcrowding. It's very small. When all six of us are in the cockpit, we think that we will irritate each other all the time. We will keep bumping into each other. However, the weightlessness artificially multiplies the sensation of available space to move in by two or three. But why aren't the spaceships bigger? Spaceships are relatively small because the actual weight is a crucial element to ensure they can get into space. So everything must be extremely small, weighing as little as possible. Otherwise, the spaceship would be gigantic. In such a small space, and moreover in weightlessness, the challenge is also to breathe properly. It's very important that the air is constantly moving, not only so it can pass through filters, but also to avoid suffocating on our own carbon dioxide, which would remain there if the air couldn't move. Indeed, in weightlessness, the carbon dioxide that is rejected tends to form a bubble before our mouth. And the risk is a lack of oxygen. That's why in space stations, Big fans blow air 24-7, and of course it makes a noise. Some devices operate at 100 decibels, the equivalent of an elementary school playground in full activity. 